Well, Shabbat Shalom, Mishpukah, Shabbat Shalom. This is your brother, Kazak Yeresh, Kazak Yeresh, once again with another teaching on the Shabbat. We want to deal for a very few minutes, not going to deal very long on this subject. We're going to get straight to the point. We want to talk about defense of the name. Now, a lot of people look at us as Hebrew Israelites and say, Y'all don't believe in Jesus, so therefore, I can't hear you. We have people in the Christian church. We have Israelites who know they're Israelites now, who still use the names. And so when they hear those of us that know we're Israelites, tell them we're not hating on the Messiah. We're not saying that he didn't exist. We're not saying that he is not the Savior. But we want to get that name straight because... Everything that we got, absolutely, we got it from the Gentiles. But guess what? We also got that name, J-E-S-U-S. So we're going to deal with that. We're going to show you that the Messiah's name could not have possibly been Jesus. It's impossible. And that is not the name that is great among the Gentiles because that scripture is taken out of context applying that to this time frame so we're going to deal with that so we're going to start right with the verse the chapter that our teachers use to say we hold on to that name jesus because the scripture said that jesus would be great among the gentiles we're going to show you where that scripture came from and then we're going to show you how that scripture applies to other places in the prophetic flow it's very important and key that we understand time we have to understand the prophetic time frame to understand what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. Okay? Therefore, once we get that part straight, we can't teach great teachings on the scriptures on teachings and deal with the whole chapter of a scripture to get to one scripture and to pull one verse out and say, see, there it is right there. That's why we hold on to the name of Jesus. So we're going to deal with that because I'm surprised that we have teachers that with all the knowledge that they have still hold on to that pagan title. That's a violation of commandment three. It's a violation of the third commandment. So we're going to deal with that. Okay, we're going to deal with that in this, in this very few minutes. Now, let's go to Malachi chapter one. Malachi chapter one. That's the chapter where that scripture is commonly quoted by Hebrew Israelites who know the Israel now, but still want to hold on to that pagan name. Once again, we're not saying that we don't believe in the Messiah. We believe in him. He is the Savior. But let's get his name straight, brothers and sisters. All right. Malachi chapter 1. Verse number one, he says, from the rising of the sun, Malachi chapter one, verse 11. From the rising of the sun, even to the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. And in every place incense shall be offered unto my name. And pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen, saith Yah of hosts. Now, I can stop right there. Because if you read the first part of that verse, teachers, and stop there, then you have a partial truth. But he didn't stop there and say, this name shall be great among the Gentiles, period. He didn't stop there. So I don't understand what is it that our ministries want to continue to use that verse and say that his name, Jesus, that's his name. And use that as a doctrine to continue to pervert the name of the Most High. You said, brother, you sound angry. I am because I can't believe teachers that I have great respect for that can go that far identify the nation of Israel, but yet still want to hold on to a pagan name to call my savior by. 
Jesus, brothers and sisters, was not his name. Growing up as a, as a pastor's son, as a Christian in the Church of God in Christ, as an ordained minister and pastor, I called him by that name. But when I went into a study and research of the language, I understood that Jesus is not a translation as is commonly taught. Jesus is a substitution, brothers and sisters. It's not a language issue. It's a substitution. It's like you saying, okay, my name is Kazak or Kazakia, like you eat like your casket or like Hezekiah, Kazakia, Hezekiah. That's my name. Now, if you say, if you call me uh, Stone, that is not my name. Although Kazak, which means strong, could be, could be referenced to Stone, but my name is not Stone. My name is Kazakia which means strong, okay? Strength of Yah. Every apostle and prophet had the Father's name, Yah. That's why when you get excited in your congregation, in your church, you say, Hallelujah. You don't say, Hallelujah, Jesus, brothers and sisters. You don't say, Hallelujah, God, brothers and sisters. You don't even say, Hallelujah, Elohim. You say, Hallelujah. Why? Because Yah is the Father's name, and the Son had the Father's name, Yahshua, which means Yah, the self-existing one, is Shua, salvation. So let's get it straight. We're not attacking the Messiah. We're attacking the use of a pagan term in reference to the Holy Messiah. That's, what we're, that's all we're talking about. We're not talking, we're not attacking him. We're attacking the usage of that pagan title to the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Hallelujah. Now, let's get back to that verse so I can close it out. Read the whole verse, teacher. Read the whole verse. Don't stop at the top of that. Read the whole. Look at what he says here. He says, verse 11, as you always quote, respect to you, sir. I watch you, and I have learned a lot from watching you, but... Let's go all the way with this name thing because this is part of, this is part of the covenant. Third commandment. Thou shalt not remove the name and to substitute the name of the Most High and give him a Hellenistic pagan Gentile name is a violation of the third commandment. We're teaching our people to continue to violate the commandments by replacing, removing, substituting the name of the Most High and his son with the pagan deity's name. That's what this is about. It's not about language. It's about removing and substituting. So in other words, this person's name that was substituted, that they put the Messiah's name, uh, taken, took it away rather, and put this name in there, is actually a person, another person. That's what we have to understand. It's not a language issue. It's not language. It's a substitution of replacing the creator with a one who wants to be the creator, who actually is Halel or Lucifer. That's why we have to study the language because we understand when you study the language, you understand why the name was substituted. Now, let me get back. So he says here, from the rising of the sun, even to the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles Dot, 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 don't stop there because that's not where the sentence stops. He says, my name shall be great among the Gentiles and in every place. Incense shall be offered. Now, where are the incense being offered, brothers and sisters? If this name, J-E-S-U-S, is great among the Gentiles and this is what this is applying to, where are the incense being offered? In every place, as he said. He said, in every place, incense shall be offered unto my name. See, where are the incense being offered to his name? Look what he says. For my name shall be great even among the heathens. That's the other nation. So now he said that my name shall be great among the Gentiles and my name shall be great among the heathens, the other nations, and incense shall be offered in every place. 
It sounds like to me that's talking about futuristically, not in our present time frame, in the present time, but in the prophetic time, the future time of when the millennium kingdom is going to be here. That's what that's talking about, brothers and sisters. Not today's time. So we can't use that to apply that and say, we're going to hold on to that name because it said that my name shall be great among the Gentiles. All right, now, so he says, my name shall be great among the Gentiles and in every place. Incense shall be offered unto my name. See that? That hasn't happened. And pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen, saith Yah of hosts, or El Shaddai, Yah of hosts. Now, let's go to another place in Scripture where that same phrase is used under another teacher, Dawid, the king of Israel. In the book of Tehillim, and it's good that you learn the names of the books. Psalms is the English word, but the actual word is Tehillim. Tehillim, okay, it's a Hebrew word. Now, let's look at Tehillim or Psalms 113, verse 1 through 3. Psalms chapter 113, verse 1 through 3. We're going to break it down. Because we're in the Ruach Kadesh, the spirit age where the spirit now is has already began to awaken the nation of Israel the true nation of Israel and now he's bringing these truths back to the nation we've got to get it all right the identity where we got that part together the law part we're getting that together now now let's get the names right because why they all come hand in hand brothers and sisters now Tehillim 113 this is what our big brother Dawid had to say Tehillim 113. And he says in Tehillim 113, it says, Praise ye Yah. In other words, that phrase is the Hebrew phrase, Hallelujah. So if we were to read that in the Hebrew tongue, it would say, Hallelujah or Hallelujah. Then he says, Hallelujah or Praise ye servants of Yah. Praise the name of Yah. As in hallelujah, we all do it in church and in our synagogues and in our mosques. We get happy and we say hallelujah. It's universal, brothers and sisters. That's the Father's name, Yah. Gave his son his name, Yahshua. Not Jesus, which we'll deal with that in a minute. Now, so he says, blessed be the name of Yah from, from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same Yah, Yah's name is to be praised. See that? That's why we get happy and we say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We're praising the name of Yah, brothers and sisters. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. We have to get that revelation. We've gone th that far to get the revelation that the true Israelites are the people that were sold into slavery through the Middle Passage, but now we've got to go a step further and get the revelation of his name. Hallelujah. Get the revelation of the name. Because the Ruach Kadesh, the Spirit, will give you that revelation. It's not about being right or wrong. It's about understanding. Because one waters, one plants, but Yah ultimately gives the increase. He has used different people. He has set in his mikras, in his congregation, some apostles, prophets, pastors, and teachers, and evangelists for the working of the ministry, for the perfecting of the saints until we all come into the perfection, brothers and sisters. So that's why the Most High has given you that great revelation that we are the people of the book. But now let's go another level with it because now that you have planted a seed throughout the United States and the world for that matter, our teachers have planted that seed of who the true Israelites are and why it is that we're in the conditions we're in. Now let's take it another step further and let's get the name thing right. Let's get the name right. Hallelujah. That's what it's about, the name. That's a great name. Nothing wrong with calling the name Yah. That's a great name. That is the great name. He is the great I am. That's what Yah means, I am. He told Moshe on the mountain. He said, who shall I say sent me? What is his name? He said, tell him I am that I am. In the Hebrew, he said, Hayah Asher Hayah. 
Yah, which means self-exist. There's nobody else that can call me anything else other than I am. See? Now, let me get back. So, so, so in Psalms, he said that, that once again, he said, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, Yah's name is to be praised. See? His name is to be praised. Not this other name, Jesus, Yah or Yahshua, because Yahshua has the name of the Father, Yahshua, as in Obadiah, as in Zechariah, as in Malachi, as in Zephaniah, and so forth and so on. Even the city that we call Jerusalem is not called Jerusalem, brothers and sisters. It's called Yahrushalayim in the Hebrew tongue. Translators have substituted and put a J there and called it Jerusalem, took the A out and the H, but actually is Yahrushalayim which means Yah's place of peace. We're talking about millennial. In the thousand years when the Messiah brings his kingdom to the earth, it's going to be called Yahrushalayim, Yah's place of peace. For a thousand years. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, let's go to Psalm Isaiah, Yesha Yah, Yesha Yah. Isaiah, which Isa is a pagan deity, but so... The prophet's name was Yesha Yah, or Yasha Yah, or same as Yahoshua. Actually, it's another variation of Yah Yahoshua. Uh, Isaiah is actually another variation of Yahoshua. It's Yahisha. That's a whole other story for another teaching. But anyway, Yesha Yah, chapter 59. He says in Yesha Yah, chapter 59, hallelujah. Chapter 59, verse 19. He says, So shall they fear the name of Yah from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy shall come in like flood. The spirit of Ruach of Yah shall lift up a standard against him. See that? So he said that they shall fear the name of Yah from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. See that? That's talking futuristically. Now, if we tie that together with the verse in the next chapter of Yesha Yah, which means Yah is salvation, he foretold the prophet that his salvation was coming. To the ends of the earth. That's what Isaiah means. Yesha, Yasha, Yah. Yah is Sha, salvation. Like Yahshua. Yasha, Shu, Yasha, Shu, Yah. <laughs> uh, we got to study this language, brothers and sisters, and we can understand what it's saying. His name was not Isaiah, his name was Yasha, Yah. Yasha, Yah. Yasha salvation, Yah of Yah. Yasha, Yah, that's his name. Yasha, Yah, salvation of Yah. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what it means. Isaiah, on the other hand, means something different. Isa, Isa. In the in the Islamic books, they call they substitute the name of the Messiah and call him Isa, which is another pagan deity. But his name is Yasha, or Yasha, or Yeshua, or Yeshe which is uh, the name of Dawi's father, Jesse. In English, it's called Jesse, but in the Hebrew tongue, it is Yeshe, which is a variation form of Yasha, or salvation. Now, I said a mouthful right there, but let me get back to the scripture. Now, if we look at Yasha, Yah, chapter 60, look at verse 1. He breaks it down because we're talking about the end time. He says, verse uh, chapter 60 of Yasha, Yah, verse 1. Rise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of Yahweh, or Yah, because Yahweh is two. You got Yah and Wah. Just like we said, we said this too. Yahweh, Yeshua, the Word, and Yah, the Father. 
You got both in one. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's it. Yashia. Or Yah, Yahweh. So he says that the glory of Yahweh is risen upon thee. Watch what he says here. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and the gross darkness to people. But Yahweh shall arise upon thee and the glory shall be seen upon thee. Watch what he says here. And the Gentiles, there it is again, same thing we saw in, 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 Mal in uh, Malachi chapter 1, shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. See that? So he said, that's when that's going, to, that prophecy that was spoken out of the mouth of Micaiah, that's his name, Micaiah, or Malachi, Malik, which means messenger of Yah, Malachi, Yah, messenger of Yah. The messenger of Yah said, Malachi, Yah, every time you say it, you call him the most highest man, you can't even read the books without calling his name. Yah. Think about it. Think about it. Micaiah, or not Micaiah, I'm sorry, Malachi, Malachi said, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, his name shall be great among the Gentiles when in that millennial age. Now, we don't have time to go to Yahkezkel, Yahkezkel, commonly called Ezekiel, chapter 40, and on where it tells us about the millennium temple that's going to be right here on earth. That's when that's going to take place, brothers and sisters. Because we continue through the book of Yahshua, Isaiah, all the way back down to the last chapter. He talks about keeping the feast that all the Gentiles and all of the other nations, which is the heathens, shall come up to Yerushalayim to keep the feast of tabernacles. See that? So there, we have to understand and be clear about what the scripture is saying. Now, I want to give you this last language issue so we can understand and deal with why the name Yahshua was substituted with that name Jesus, which actually is a translation of Hey Zeus. All right. Now, so the son's name never was Jesus or Hey Zeus in the land of Israel because it was impossible for him to be called that because English was not the language. And the father knows all, but he gave him a specific name to not be changed. He doesn't change, the scripture says. He says, behold, I change not. Why would he give the Messiah a name that means something and then later on in the last days change his name? He gave him a name that was above every name. So the translators don't have any rights to change that name, brothers and sisters. You don't translate a person's name or substitute, in this particular case, substitution. So, the name Jesus is from the Hebrew word 3091, which is Yahoshua. Now, somebody asked a question. Well, Jesus' name, was Jesus' name in the Old Testament? No, Jesus wasn't in the Old Testament, but Yahoshua or Yahshua, or Yasha, or Yeshe, all those variations of the name of Yahshua was in Old Testament. So his name has not changed, but the translators, the Gentiles, have changed his name. Why? Because they ignorantly worship the unknown God, using that terminology. That's who the unknown God is to them. Hey, Zeus. And that's the reason why they changed the name of the Messiah and gave him a pagan name called Jesus, which is a variation of Jesus, which goes back to Egypt, Egyptian Greek Isis. Do some research and you'll find it out to be true. The Messiah's name never was Jesus. Couldn't have been because there was nobody in the, in the land named Jesus in Israel because there was no English people there. Everybody had Hebrew names. So they have substituted that name and have replaced the name, the Hebrew name 3091, which is Yahoshua from the Strong's 3068. You can look that up in 3067, uh, 3467 rather, 3468, 
1954. And finally, 3442, which is Yahshua, meaning Yah will save. Now, let's flip over to Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. He reads, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, he says, Wherefore, Elohim, that's Elohim the Father, also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. The name above every name is Yah, brothers and sisters. When the Most High told Moses in, Ezek in Exodus, Ashimoth, or Exodus chapter 3. Go there right quick. Exodus chapter 3. The Most High told, told Israel, told, uh, I should say, told Moshe the prophet. He gave him the record of his name. Hallelujah. Verse 14. Shemoth, Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. And Elohim said unto Moshe, I am that I am. He said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Yahishara, or Israel, but Yahishara is a whole other subject for another day, but we'll just use Israel for now. We don't want to confuse any further. He said, You shall say to the children of Israel, I am have sent thee. And Elohim said moreover unto Moshe, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh, Elohim is what he said. He said, Yahweh, meaning he, he included the Son, or the Word, and the Father, of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of, of Yitzchak, or, or Isaac, Isaac in English, but Yitzchak, and the Elohim of Yaakov have sent me unto you. This is my name forever. See that? And this is my memorial unto all generations. So he's saying, this is my name, my memorial forever. My name shall not be changed. This is my name. King James can't change it. The, the Germans can't change it. The Latins can't change it. Nobody can substitute or even if you want to consider the translation, which is not. It's a substitution. Okay, I, okay. grammatically or technically you are correct. It is a translation. Translation does not necessarily mean exchange for exchange. Translation could be a substitution. That's what it is, a substitution. It's a translation. See? But it's a translation to substitute with a pagan deity. Hey, Zeus was a pagan deity. Hey, which is Hebrew, Hey, Lel, which is the name of Lucifer, who was the son of the morning. If we go to Isaiah chapter 14, well, I don't have time to go there, but Isaiah chapter 14 lets us know that Hey, Lel was his name. When he calls him, he says, son of the morning. Let's turn it right quick. Yesha, Yasha, Yah, chapter 14. Yasha, Yah, chapter 14. And look at what he says in Yasha, Yah, Chapter 14, verse 12. Yashiah, Isaiah, Yashiah, chapter 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Now, that name Lucifer is a substitution, brothers and sisters. His name was not Lucifer. His name was Halel. The translators substituted his name and put that name Lucifer there. His name was Halel, which means to shine for the high Elohim or the high high one. El means high one. We know the pagans use El as their deity, but we're not talking about the, the pagan deity El. El means high, high one. So Lucifer's real name is Halel. Now, in the translation, if you put it both together, you got hey in Latin, Zeus. Because J-E-S-U-S, -S, brothers and sisters, is pronounced every other nation in Latin America. When you put those letters together, J-E-S-U-S, -S, they don't call him Jesus. They call him hey, Zeus. Only in Christendom do we call J-E-S-U-S -S, Jesus. So that's just a play on words. That's just a smoke green so that you won't see that you're actually saying, hey, 
Zeus. When you say, hey, Zeus, come rescue me. That's what you're saying. When you call him Jesus, you're calling him by the pagan name. Substitution is not the same. So you have violated commandment number three, which says thou shalt not take the name or remove that name and substitute it with the pagan name. So we got to throw that out. We got to call the Messiah by his rightful Hebrew name, which is Yahshua, Yahoshua, Yasha, whatever. As long as you got salvation in that of Yah, Yasha, Yah, uh, Yahshua, Yahoshua, that's all, all correct. Because you're saying that he is the salvation of the Most High Yah. That's what you're saying. Now, so he told Moshe, that is his name. Now, go with me to Psalms, to Helam chapter 68. Last verse I'm going to give you. Hallelujah. Chapter 68, Yasha Yah. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, to Helam 68, or Psalms. To Helam 68, or Psalms. Look at what he says. To Helam 68, and he says, in Tehillim 68, verse 4, Tehillim Psalms, chapter 68, verse 4. He says, sing unto Elohim. King James has God. God is a whole, whole other, another pagan substitution. In, in the Hebrew tongue, it was Elohim. Okay? He says, sing unto Elohim, sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name. And right there in the King James Version, since this is what you use to read from the King James Version, right there in the King James Version, it says, by his name, Jah. Now, of course, in Hebrew, there is no J. So in the Hebrew, it says, by his name, Yah. Explain that to me. If his name is not Yah, explain that verse to me, brother. Explain it. Please explain that to me. Call me. My number is 312-927-4373. My name is Kazak Yah. Kazak Yah. 312-927-4373. Please call me and explain to me why you place that and call the Creator even Jehovah. Hova means ruin. If we look at the, the actual origin of that word, Hova just simply means ruin. All right? Hova means ruin or waste. So why would we call the Father by a name which means to ruin? Why would you say G? Hova. That's what the substitutors did. They call him that name, Hova. His name is not Jehovah. His name is Yah, Wah, or just simply Yah, as in Hallelujah, or as in Obadiah, Zechariah, Zechariah, Malachi, Zephaniah, Yerushalayim. Okay, that's his name. So he says, "Call upon his name, extol him by his name." Yeah. Now, hallelujah. Let's look at one other place. Let's look at Exodus, Shemoth, Exodus chapter 6, verse 3. Shemoth, Exodus chapter 6 and 3. Exodus chapter 6, verse 3. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 6, Shemoth, Exodus chapter 6, verse 3. Shemoth, Exodus chapter 6, verse 3. Shemoth, Exodus <laughs> chapter 6, verse 3. I'm saying that because I want you to understand what I'm saying, okay? I'm repeating myself. Now, chapter 6, verse 3, he says, And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Yitzchak, and unto Yaakov, by El Shaddai. But by my name, now King James has right there Jehovah, which is wrong. We just went over that. It's not Jehovah. I want you to see that it is not 
Jehovah. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you a place in Scripture how you can understand that is not Jehovah. All right. Just bear me one second. Okay, now, that word hova, let's look at um, Shemuth 6 and 3 again. It says here, but by my name, now King James has Jehovah in there. Now, underline that because I want you to underline that because since you are reading English, that's, that's where your mindset is. You're not looking at the, the, the language, so you're looking at what you're seeing in the King James English. And that's what the problem is with most of us, our teachers. We're looking at the English and not looking at what it should be versus what it is in the physical eye. The flesh, we are being led by the senses and not by the spirit. Uh, Shaul said, as many as are led by the spirit are the sons of Elohim, are the sons of the Most High Yah. So, not by what we see, because we, we have to study to get this clarity and the understanding of this thing. So he says here, but by my name, King James has Jehovah now, the number 3068 is there. 3068. So if we look at the number 3068 um, in the Strong's numbers, the Hebrew, Hebrew 3068, is the, it, is the, it is the Hebrew word Yod He Va He, pronounced Ha. Wah, yah, wah. Because in Hebrew, in the ancient Hebrew that the Messiah and the Hebrew that the Father spoke in didn't have any vowel points. The vowel po points was added by the Edomites, the Jewish people who took the text and they tr they took and mixed their language with it and called and created a dialect which is called Yiddish Hebrew. And they put vowel points in there. And they made they are the ones that made it Jehovah. But actually, it's Yahweh or Yahweh, 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 as in Hallelujah. Okay. Now, so there, the the word thirty sixty eight, which is Yod He Vah, or Yahweh, not J. There's no J there anywhere in, in sight. Okay. It is also from. From Hebrew 1961. So if we go to Hebrew 1961, uh, Hebrew 1961 is, uh, hold on one second, brothers and sisters. 1961 is Haya. Haya. We just to told you that. 1961, that's what Moshe was told by the creator himself that my name is I am that I am Haya Asher Haya that's what he said in the Hebrew tongue Yah now so if we look at this language this chapter 3 chapter 6 and verse 3 of Shemoth Exodus it should read but by my name Yahweh was I 
was he asked the question. Now, he wasn't putting the statement. He said, was I not known unto them? Now, we have a lesson that we teach, brothers and sisters, that we show you that everybody knew his name. It wasn't new. This was not the first time he told Moshe or anybody is from his name. They knew his name, brothers and sisters. So we need to get back to calling him by his name. Not by these substituted names, but call him by his rightful name. Now, so we said that the word hova means mischief. Okay? Now, if we look at, uh, let's see, it is actually in the Hebrew 1943, which means hova, which means ruin. Okay? That's what it means. Now, in the Hebrew, the creator did, the name was yod Vahe vah was there. Not, not ha uh, het va het Okay? That's the Hebrew. But it was yod he va he which will be pronounced Yahweh, not Het Va Het, Het Va Het. See, so that's the difference. Het Va Het or Het Va Het is means ruin, or it means mischief. Okay, it is also from 1942, which is Hava, which means to covet. Okay, so his name is not Yahava, because Hava means to covet or to fall. So we have people to call him Yahava. No, no, -uh. his name is not Yahava. His name is Yahweh. Yohei Vahe. Yahweh. You say, well, brother, you saying Yohei Vahe, but you're saying Wah. Okay, V in the Hebrew Paleo ancient had a W sound. It sounded like Yahweh, not Yahweh, Yahweh. Okay, that was it, how you pronounce it or explain it. So that word, um, once again, that word um, Hova means ruin or mischief. It is 1943, so we have to understand. So in defense of the name, the, from the language perspective, we don't call the creator Jehovah. We don't call him Yahweh. We don't call him Lord, because that's that's a substitution. Because in the in the Hebrew, uh, those that didn't want to call his name substituted that and called him Adonai, which is a Hebrew, a pagan deity called Donus. So we don't call him that. So I'm going to end right there. So from the scripture perspective and from the grammatical perspective, we understand that the Father's name is Yah. And his son's name is Yahshua. And hopefully you got something out of that lesson. And we pray that the next time that the blessing of the Most High Yah and of his son Yahshua and the Ruach Kadesh be with you until the next time. Shalom, shalom, shalom.